Now believe me, I understand. I get it. I totally get it. I'm a Bears fan. I've seen a cavalcade of crap at the quarterback position, the likes of which few other organizations, fan bases could even dream or imagine of. That's a reality. It absolutely is. Like, it has been a dumpster fire and a mess of mediocrity and crappy play for decades of my life now. So I can certainly understand when it comes to Deshaun Watson that you have teams that look at it and say, we either have a quarterback or we don't. If you have a quarterback, you can figure out the rest, potentially. But if you don't have that quarterback, you have nothing. You can't just sit there and build a team with a great defense and a running game and a game-managing offense and expect to win consistently in the National Football League in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl anymore. That's just not the way the game works anymore. It's an offense-first, offense-driven league. You have to be able to score some points. And even if you have a great defense, at some point in time, somebody's going to exploit those matchups. The whole structure of the game, the rules of the game are designed that way. Like if defense still won championships, then the Rams would have been the Super Bowl champs last year. And I know some of you are going to opine, well, what about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? What about them? Wasn't their defense that won in the Super Bowl? It was the offense. So their offense putting up over 30 points in three quarters and leaving other opportunities to score on the field. So even if their defense only played half-ass, they were still winning. That's my point. You have to have that offense. And it all starts with the quarterback position. You either have one or you don't. And if you don't have one, you're going to be desperate to try and find one. Unless you're a dumb dick team like the Denver Broncos. And then you just make dumb dick moves because that's what dumb dick leadership of an organization does. And especially when you look at a Deshaun Watson in a bubble, you say... You've got an elite level quarterback who is only 25 years of age, only four seasons into his career, coming off of his best statistical season of his career, who technically right now, if I'm not mistaken, is the NFL's all-time leader in completion percentage. Think about that for a second. And you know for the three plus years of his career there in Houston, that he had to play under Bill O'Brien, that Bill O'Brien was an impediment. Bill O'Brien was a problem. And look at the numbers that Deshaun Watson put up in a crappy situation last year after Bob's dumbass traded away DeAndre Hopkins for fucking peanuts. Like, you look at this and you say, holy shit, yeah. Give me Deshaun Watson all day. 25 years old, elite level guy. Had his best statistical season when he didn't really have shit surrounding him. Potentially the best is yet to come. They're going to want in. That's not hard to understand. And even when you look at it for some teams, like if you're a team that has a history of sucking at the quarterback position, you need that guy to change the fortunes of your franchise. Or maybe you're a team that's kind of like middle of the pack to you know, back end, sixth or seventh seed in the playoff picture but you're lacking that dude at the quarterback position, you get a chance to bring that guy in. You know, the Houston Texans reported asking price of three first round picks and two second round picks isn't nearly as steep of a price as you might make it seem to be. Because you think about somebody being able to trade for a Deshaun Watson and being interested in trading for a guy like Deshaun Watson you know more likely than not that those three first-round picks are at worst probably going to be in the mid to late teens or somewhere in the 20s or even lower in the 20s. You know this. It's an incredibly good likelihood. So it's not like you're giving up, while well, first-round picks in and of themselves you know, have a bit of a premium to them, it's not like you're trading away potentially three top 10 or top 5 picks. That's just not realistic. And when you look at the history of the draft, look at the 2017 NFL draft that Deshaun Watson came from. It epitomizes just how much of a crapshoot it is. You have 12 guys out of the 32 taken in round one that have made at least one Pro Bowl. So there was definitely some talent in that draft. And then you have guys like Trubisky got a garbage-ass Pro Bowl nod that they didn't deserve. But nonetheless, it's on the books. He's a one-time Pro Bowler and a one-time MVP. 
Nickelodeon valuable player. <laughs> but you also look at that draft and you say six of the top 10 picks aren't even with their original team after four seasons. And some of them didn't even last that long. Like Jamal Adams was traded. Solomon Thomas washed out. Mitchell Trubisky was a bust. Leonard Fournette got cut after a couple of seasons. Corey Davis left in free agency to go sign with the Jets. Like, we can go on and on here. John Ross was an absolute bust. So several of these guys that were taken in the top 10 aren't even with their original team anymore. So even if you said one of those picks is potentially a top 10 guy, what is the chance or the likelihood that you, with those three first round picks or even the two second round picks, get one player the caliber of the talent level of a Deshaun Watson? The odds are overwhelming that you're not. And especially if you feel like you're in a contending position now with a guy like Deshaun Watson coming in, you make that deal 100 out of 100 times. Because then you go on top of that and say, not just any talent in general, but what are the odds that you'd be able to draft a quarterback with one of those first round picks or second round picks in the next three years and be able to get a guy even close to the talent level and the performance level of Deshaun Watson? The overwhelming likelihood is you're not going to get that. So you have to figure out a different way to go about it. Even though I've always been a bigger fan of drafting and developing your own quarterback, Sometimes you do have to go out there. So I get it. A guy like a Deshaun Watson becomes available. Of course, teams should be naturally interested for all the factors that I called out here. But I really have to question the timing of this. First, like, before we get to anything else, just from a pure football standpoint, which isn't even the most important consideration here, obviously, when we're talking about Deshaun Watson, but it's not a small thing. You'd be looking at trading for Deshaun Watson less than two weeks before your season starts. Like, how long is it taking to gonna bring him in to get familiarize him with your offense, to customize your game plan around him? Like, what's your growth curve? What's your learning curve here? How long is it gonna take to bring him up to speed? If you were gonna trade for him now, why in the bluest of blue fucks wouldn't you have traded for him three or four goddamn months ago? Why wouldn't you have traded for him at draft time? Where you could have potentially sat there and said, hey, you know what? We're going to sit there and include a 2021 first round pick. So that way this, pro 20, this first round pick shit doesn't extend out to 2024 where we don't have one. Like, boy, seems to make sense. But that didn't happen. So I question the timing and judgment around that piece alone. But obviously when we're talking about Deshaun Watson right now, the much more important consideration and circumstance is that the dude's got 22 different allegations of sexual assault, sexual harassment of some kind. Are all of these allegations true? Are all of these allegations bullshit? Are some of them true? Some of them bullshit? I don't know. And the reality is we may never know. It's what it is. But what if he's guilty of even just one of those allegations or accusations? Just one of the 22. That still means he's a sex offender. It still means he sexually assaulted or sexually harassed a woman. Especially when you talk about the sexual assault thing, like sexual harassment is bad, yes. But not nearly as bad as like actual assault. Like, let's be clear. There are different levels to this. And if he's guilty of even just one of those accusations, like, why in the hell would you want any part of that? It's bad enough to be bringing in a guy at any position with that on his resume or on his record. But you're talking about a guy like him, a star player like him, with that type of profile, that type of name and face and brand recognition in Deshaun Watson? You really want to be associated with that? Really? Really? And what if even the charges are all dismissed? All the lawsuits are dismissed. He gets away with having no real consequences or repercussions from like civil or legal matters. But the league still suspend him for four games or six games or whatever the hell. Like you talk about framing it up with conditional picks based off of how much he plays, blah, blah, blah. But 
again. I question the timing here and the judgment because it's the potential stigma of being associated with a guy like Deshaun Watson that if he is guilty of any of the things that he has been accused of, you know what this is going to mean from a public optics standpoint, a cancel culture standpoint. This shit's not going to be good. It's going to be a raging Cajun dumpster fire here. Really bad. I'm not surprised that teams are keeping an eye on the situation, keeping a close watch, interested in the situation. I get that. I understand that. They're doing their due diligence. But to still be sitting there talking about you're interested to the point where you might want to make a deal? Woo! That's risky. Yes, there's no risk it, no biscuit, but there's also tisk tisk it. Don't fucking risk it right now. Especially at the price that the Houston Texans are commanding. They don't have the leverage here. You have them by the balls. Don't cave. But then when I look at the reports talking about the leader in the clubhouse right now is the Miami Dolphins. So wait, you're giving up on Tua already after one season? I'm not the biggest Tua advocate or backer here, but that seems incredibly unfair, especially when you really truly didn't give him a full opportunity last season because you went all Ross Perot with him. He's in. He's out. He's in. He's out. He's in. He's out. He's in. He's out. Because that's exactly how the hell, Brian Flores, you want to develop a young quarterback, you idiot. And then you think about it. If you'd have just drafted Justin Herbert like the hell I said you should have last year, you might not be in any of this spot. You might not have any of these decisions to make. So instead of drafting the right guy to begin with and being able to keep those future first round picks, now you're talking about potentially having to trade for somebody else's guy because you got it wrong and then have to invest totally three more first round picks and two more second round picks into a position that you just invested a top five pick in last year. And then you look at this year. You're at pick three. You could have went with Trey Lance and Justin Fields, even a Mac Jones, if you're so inclined, being crazy. You could have just stayed put and just drafted one and hope that you got it right because then you would have had a young quarterback on a rookie scale contract, which gives you all types of flexibility and all types of options. So if... if the Dolphins actually do pull off this type of deal and give up anywhere close to the type of package that the Houston Texans are talking about. Why would Chris Greer and Brian Flores, A, be allowed to consummate this trade, and B, still employed after said trade happened? Because it's a mission of how badly you botched the quarterback position the past two years. And that's on the leadership of the organization. So why would you trust them to make the right call this time? Like, that's really dumb. The timing is whack. The judgment here seems really off. Having interest in keeping engaged, keeping in touch is one thing. Keeping a close eye on the situation is one thing. But to the point where you're potentially thinking about still pursuing this deal and trying to hurry up and get a deal done? Woo! That takes some nuts. And some stupidity. I get it. In a bubble with none of the other off the field shit, it's an entirely different conversation. But realistically, it was a different situation than what we're currently in. Deshaun Watson probably would have traded four or five months ago and we wouldn't be having this conversation. But right now, at this particular moment, why would any team be in a rush? This, to me, is a circumstance where you're better to be too late and be right than to be first and be wrong. I know that's not the way it works in this internet world. Tis better to be first and be wrong than to be second and be right and accurate. That's the way the world works. But in this particular case, tis better to be second or later and be right than be first and be fucking wrong. Whew. The dolphins do this. That's a lot of risk it for the biscuit.